Hi everybody, Adam Steele, Reaper Guy here, and today I'm going to talk to you about something called folders. You may have seen these in other DAWs, you may even have seen them in Reaper, but I'm going to show you how to use them and how ridiculously powerful they can be at organizing a really complex project into something that I can deal with in easy bite-sized pieces and process without having to get all complicated with separate aux buses and sends and all that kind of stuff. Here's an album that I just finished mixing. Uh, this is a nice pop punk Scar album and it's got a lot going on. If you can see down here the number of tracks, before they disappear behind my camera, it's at least 124 tracks. It's actually 141 total and it doesn't look that bad. Um, we can see there's an instrument bus here which has drums, bass, guitars, acoustics, guitar solo brass, an extra trombone, vocals, backing vocals, and a group for all the kind of sound effects, and another group for the effects like the reverbs and the delays. And I broke that down, it looked dead easy. How did I do that? Like this, folders. Folders are really powerful. Um, if I open the guitars group, and then open say the rhythm guitars, then open and a rhythm guitar up, you can see this suddenly got one, two, three, four layers deep of folders and everything is nice and neat and organized. This looks absolutely terrifying on screen, but let's just work this out. I'll talk you through this. So for this rhythm guitar, I've got four tracks, four different microphone types that are then inside a folder for that rhythm guitar. So then that's considered one source by me. Then I've got four rhythm guitars, all with their folders, that then go into what I call the rhythm guitar group. Then I've got the clean guitars, rhythm guitars, and there's an octave guitar. They all go into the guitar group, the overarching guitar group. Then that, and the drums, bass, acoustic, guitar solo, and the brass, all go into an instrument bus group which means that everything stacks up and the sound kind of flows upwards through the folders. So each one of those guitar microphones flows up to its folder, which then adds with the other folders and so on. And it all kind of folds up like a Matroshka Russian doll. It just makes things so easy and there's no routing anywhere. There's no routing. This is all just, it just happens. And this is why Reaper is awesome. If I solo one of these guitar channels, you'll hear just that microphone. That sounds like it's coming from the left, despite the fact that it's in the center. And that's because it's going through the Rhythm Guitar 1 folder. If I solo that, that's been panned to the left. Let's put these on so I can hear what's going on. And that's now going to be all those microphones panned to the left. That then goes through the rhythm group, which is this guitar, the one on the right, and more further down. All of these all go through this rhythm guitar folder. And that rhythm guitar folder has a little bit of processing on some EQ and something parametric here, which there's only actually one band active. And so that then flows upwards through the guitar group with the clean guitars and the octaves. And they all get their own individual processing, but then the other, the other tracks are currently silent. But if I skip to another part, there are different guitars there and that all goes through a little bit of a high frequency lift, a little bit of group bus compression that barely gets touched. That's a, just a little kiss from an LA-2A, as we learn from Daryl Thorpe, one of the other Pro Mix Academy guys. And that's all running through its own kind of mix bus. And then that all goes through this instrument bus, which is the full everything. And without the folders, without soloing, we'll hear vocals too, and any other instruments there. And I have reasons for doing all of this. It keeps things organized and simple. And that way I can go deep diving or not. Now I'll show you a trick 
because as it stands, this mix window at the bottom um, doesn't work quite so easily as I would like. So there's one thing that I change, which is by default, it doesn't let you collapse these down. If I right click on the master bus on the bottom left, I get a big list of options. And one of them that I like to click is this one here, clickable icon for folder tracks to show and hide children. If I turn that off, that's gone by default. And um, we can now see that there are little folder icons on the tracks that show us that these are folders. But by putting on that clickable icon, I know they're folders and I can also open up or close the folders on the mix window so that I don't have to look at a thousand tracks if I don't want to. And so I can hide them down or blow them up as necessary. And that makes my life super easy because depending on what I'm focusing on on a mix, I can get super detailed. Like if I go, the rhythm guitars, they sound like the SM57 is a little scratchy and the ribbon could come up more. I can open up all of these and I could go SM57 down a bit, ribbon up a bit. And if I'm happy with that, I'm probably never gonna touch that again. So why do I need to see these on my screen? I can just collapse down that rhythm guitar folder. I'm just gonna undo those cause I kinda had the mix where I liked it. But then inside the rhythm guitars, which is the four heavy guitars um, with two different tones, I decided that one had to be left, one had to be right, and then three and four had to be slightly inward panned, but I'm already considering these like groups or like buses, like arc sends on a lot of other DAWs, but I've not had to look in a different place. I've not had to make these a special type of track. All I did to make a folder, here's how you do it, is I just go, I'm hitting control T on Windows. I think it's Apple T for, for new track or just track, new track, insert new track. And then once I've inserted a new track, just to show you, I'm gonna make this a different color just so that it stands out. So now we've got this green one here. If I wanted the SM57 and the ribbon to be in that folder, I just make sure they're selected by shift and click. And now I click on them and drag them upwards and you'll see a big blue line appear. Now the big blue line indents as to where it's gonna go. So if I just move everything round, you'll see this blue line moving and that's where these two, as I'm holding the mouse down, that's where they're gonna go, that's where they're gonna stay. But if I move them upwards, you'll see there's a tiny little change that the, the, uh, the blue line indents a little bit. Now, if I let go, this green one is now a folder and that was it. So I can now just call this one whatever I like. I could just call it folder. And now if I solo that, I get the processing of just these two microphones. So I'm just gonna undo that and get rid of that track just for neatness. But yeah, you can cascade these as many times as you like. So quite often in a drum bus, I haven't done it on this project, but as a good example on a drum bus, I might have two or three microphones on the kick. They go in a folder. I might have two microphones on the snare top and bottom. They go in a folder. If somebody has sent me overhead channels that are left and right, I'll decide where they're panned, whether it's full wide or a little in, then I'll put them in a folder because by using folders, why would I, let's, let's say I've got overhead left and overhead right. Why would I have two copies of an EQ or a compressor and then do them all twice? Why not put them in a folder so that they come out as a stereo thing and then process just that? Then I can collapse down that folder and never think about those separate sources again unless there's some sort of edit needed. Sometimes there is. That's why I like to keep a lot of these, like the example of these guitars where there's all these different sources I've kept the separate microphones because I might decide at a later point that let's say there's a part in a song where the ribbon microphone's too boomy. I can just turn them off and nothing else in my routing was affected. I could automate those with volume automation lanes inside that group. It means that I have ultimate freedom. Like with a snare, I might do a slightly different gate or EQ on a snare top to a snare bottom to keep them 
as a snare thing. But then if I put them in a group, if the whole snare needs a gate or an EQ or a compressor or something, it's already routed for me. There's no extra work I have to do. It's just done. And like something that I've started uh, experimenting with recently is I've got this lovely Shadow Hills compressor that's on the drums, bass, guitars, um, and the brass in this case, because it's a ska band, but not on the vocals, backing vocals, um, effects channels. Uh, so they stand apart. And the easy way to do that is that I have all the main band instruments, so to speak, in a folder. And so that then goes through the folder, which passes its way back up to the kind of the master output. And that's it. It's done. It's super simple, really quick to do. And the fact that it's really quick and organizes everything for me, that's why I love Reaper. I can do all this in something like Pro Tools, but I'll be using loads of different bus sends. I might have to send, say, all four of these guitar channels out to a rhythm guitar left bus. Then I'll have to do that for four rhythm guitars, then bus them to a rhythm group bus, then to a guitar bus. And all that kind of stuff can get really complicated and you might forget where something's routed, especially when you're coming back to something long term. I can just see the chain of command right there. And there are extra benefits. Let's just kind of zoom in, make these bigger. I'm just going to hide the mix window. Something I've done as a really good example here is I didn't want to see these clean guitars so much anymore. They were kind of in my way. Uh, but I don't want to delete them. And there is a way to hide them in Reaper, but I'm not doing that today because I don't like to completely hide tracks. I, I don't like that because my memory can be quite bad and I make sure that I can see things at least in part. So those drop downs that we saw earlier when we showed the clickable icons, they're also here on folders in the edit window. This tiny little down icon right hit right here. So let's say clean guitar to left. If I click that, that makes things quite a lot smaller very quickly. If I press it again, it really crams it down to this tiny little line that's almost hard to see. Uh, and I can do that for each one. But if I look at these with loads of different examples, I can see on screen hundreds of tracks and very quickly by doing this and condensing it all down. If I'm happy with the edits and I don't want to look at the edits again, then I can save screen real estate. And now I can quickly flick up to the bass and the drums and fly past the guitars. See that little field right here that I've done by collapsing the folders, that is... Uh, 12 guitars with four channels each. So doing the math on that, that's 48 channels of audio right there in the middle of my screen without having to be unnecessarily messy. Uh, and if I do need to edit in any of that again, I can just open the folder back up and that will give me as much detail as I need. I can zoom right in on a thing and then close it back down again. And that's the kind of thing that can save you so much time and brain space. Because for me, brain space is really important. Reaper gives me the ability to not think about things I don't need to think about. So I can just concentrate on the things that really matter. Like w when I've got the microphones in the right levels, I can collapse those. When I've got the rhythm guitars in the right level, I can collapse those. To the point where we get to what you saw at the start of the video, which is basically just group faders at this point with all the processing just on those groups. I've, I've got the FX folder still open so I can see the room plate. Never did use a delay on this particular project, but anything where I do need to dive in, I click the little icon, change it, close it back. But at the end of a project, I really want to be listening and working on just overall overarching in, in overarching group elements like if i was working on say a live band and each individual microphone was fine i would then have something like this up so i could say oh the bass is a little loud down guitars are a little quiet push up and 
I'm not having to go into layers on layers and find, oh, the microphone's on this guitar amp and push it all up individually. No, I can just have my hand on each fader, so to speak, virtually. And if there is a problem that a certain instrument stands out, I can just go find it. Like, I've got how many brass here? 83 to 98. Uh, 15 brass. All, did, all I had to do was pan them, uh, turn the level down on some of them because they were a little brash, and then minimize that folder. And suddenly, that's one single thing, one single folder, one single lot of processing. And then I'm doing sends from that folder to reverbs. And that's it. It made my life easy. I don't have to think about that. When it comes to editing, there were a few things I had to do editing wise. So I didn't shrink this down on the edit window. But the freedom to have them separate is part of the rapid development. So there you go. I hope this was something really useful for you. Uh, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide, where I walk you through from the basics right the way up to this kind of level. Uh, the link is in the description. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.